Hi, yeah, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Tsepo Magwaba, but you can call me the Mad Guy T. So what do we call that? So week two, another video. You know what? This area, we are working on that consistency. You know what? The last video, I was not very happy with the quality of the video. And I went back and back and forth about should I upload it? Should I not upload it? And then eventually I was like, okay, let me just upload it temporarily. I will delete it if, you, if I don't feel well about it. But the response that you guys gave the video and the fact that people are watching it, the time, the average minutes spent on that video is like 10 minutes. And I'm like, okay, so I decided to leave it. And I hope this one will be much better. I mean, I've got a ring light, I've got that light, I've got some sunlight, but you know what, because the GoPro that I'm shooting with and a GoPro was made to shoot outside, I don't know how this video is going to look like. I hope the quality will improve, but don't worry. You know what, one of these good days, will be having a camera and all that bad quality videos will be a thing of the past. But you know what, let's not waste any more time and get on to today comment a like and share this video so that more people can um take note of this channel and subscribe and grow the family's video but before we do that don't forget to subscribe last week i was talking about the fact that people should apply and you need to consider a couple of things before applying and that your only job is to apply but in the same breath i thought about it and i was like you know what people do apply and sometimes you apply and then the respond comes back and it's not the one that you wanted and that can be a total mind f because you'll be like why why is this happening to me because i'm working so hard i am getting the marks and everything but it's just not happening so I wanted to make this video to say that even with like the many videos that we make most of the time are success stories we would shoot videos and say that uh, this is how I got into medical school so I did one two three and then finally I got accepted yay that's amazing of course and then we celebrate but in the same breath I feel like it's very important to note that things don't always happen the way we plan for them to happen and that is why for me last week i said i will always root for the underdog i will always root for the non-traditional medical students because for me i feel that those are the people who actually go through the most in terms of applying it's very nice when you apply for the first time and then you get in so today i thought we should speak about your unanswered prayers and the fact that being in that position can be quite difficult because even for me i didn't just apply one day and get in i had so many rejections from so many different institutions and at some point i was like what do they want from me i studied at ufs but ufs was also rejecting me and i was like okay but i'm your product i wrote the vet's web test i did not pass it and i was like okay what does this mean i applied to up two times they rejected me twice and then the third time when i applied was a thing of third time a charm i got accepted then i applied it the first year and then they said uh okay uh, your application was late and then that was that and then a couple of years later i applied again and then they said to me um we're not going to consider you because you are still a registered student at ufs and it's like okay cool what does this mean now and then when i applied for the third time as well that was only when i got accepted here i applied to uk as i did as well the first time they told me that i had to apply through some office the cao applications office and then when i did that uh, the application got there after the 30th of june so uh, that was unsuccessful because of that irregularity what was not what that was not really my fault but it was made to be a fault of mine i applied to sefaco and then you know what it was I, at some point i didn't even know if they got my application or not because they didn't even respond back to me and i was like okay what does this mean and when i called the office the lady told me, oh yeah, the results are out, the names of the successful people are on the window outside. And I'm like, I'm in bloom. 
so how do I then come to Pretoria to do that? And it's like, can't you call a friend to come and look for you? I'm like, no, I do not have a friend. And it's just like, okay, I'm sorry if I can't help you. It's just the way it is. And I was like, okay, cool. I guess this is also a no. So you can see, like, with every no that came, I felt like giving up. It was a thing of, do I still really want to apply? Do I really want to do this? Because honestly, I felt like I was being burdened with a dream. So I came across a couple of um, articles that I wanted to share with you guys so that when you're going through this process, you remember that, you know what, you are worth it. You remember that eventually your dream, your calling, this manifestation because we manifest we manifest that you get accepted that eventually it's going to happen most of the time it's just luck we get in because of luck we get in because of many other different factors that we don't we know nothing about okay that your unanswered prayers unfulfilled dreams and never-ending winters they say winter can be the hardest kind of living because it's more like that days grow longer when prayers go unanswered waiting for the right time to birth a dream waiting on god to finally show up and answer that desperate prayer that keeps you awake at night can be very difficult especially when you feel like time is ticking and the degree is so long try to remain hopeful you are waiting to birth this dream that you've had since you were little can really be crippling especially when you get those letters it keeps on saying thank you for your application uh, we're sorry to inform you that your application was unsuccessful that can be the hardest thing to read especially when you see like we live in the social media era unfortunately it's a blessing and it's also a curse before I think the people from back then they would get rejected and then that would be just between them and their schoolmates and their classmates and everything but now we live in social media so you get rejected today someone else gets accepted you go on twitter everyone is retweeting this person that said that posted their letter saying that congratulations you've been accepted you go on instagram the same thing is happening so you can't really escape it and run away from it you go on instagram you see medical students you're like these people are living my dream so and then it can be very difficult for you to remain hopeful but you know you need to also remember that what feels like no might really be not yet so always remind yourself of that that sometimes most of the times to you it might seem like god is saying no but he might actually just be saying not yet whether you are waiting for jesus to break through into the heart of a loved one Waiting for the timing to finally be right for your big dream to work out. Waiting to hug the loved ones from whom you are currently separated. Or waiting for the suffering to pass. Another snowy day sometimes feel like God is shaking his head and telling you his name is never going to happen. But what if God's not telling you no, but instead he's saying and whispering to you, not yet, my child. There are unseen things happening in heavenly places and all the ducks just might not be lined up for now to be the time. What feels like God's no might simply be his gentle not yet. So it's very important for you to remind yourself of that all the time. You don't have to have other people reminding you of it. You don't have to believe in your dream with other people. Sometimes you just need that inner voice inside of you to say to you at the end of the day we are going to try again you say okay this year I applied the results came back it's not what I wanted but I'm going to apply again next year and then next year when I apply I'm going to apply to a wider pool because I've seen my friends leave the country because they wanted to go study medicine elsewhere because in South Africa they couldn't get in. I almost went to Cuba. It was this closed. I had sent in all the application. Everything was right. And then I just got TB. I got TB two months before we had to leave. 
and then when I was doing the health checks and everything that's when I failed because my health was not at its best because now I was sick and I felt terrible for me it was like God is this a sign are you saying no and best believe during that time I, I like I didn't understand what was happening but now connecting the dog the dots backwards I realized that God had something else planned for me and I realized that my purpose was for me to study here my purpose was for me to give my hundred percent here that is why all the time when I do the things that I do I always give in all the effort that I can I always make sure that I do everything with a cheerful heart because I remember that God's that no that I thought God was saying no to me he was actually saying not yet he was actually saying to me I've got something else planned for you so remind yourself of that 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 no might just be not yet I'm still aligning things in heaven for you I got this you don't have to worry about this got your heart from offense over unfulfilled dreams often the fulfillment of a promise in your life is more about your heart than anything else make up your mind to keep your heart soft and unoffended while you wait refuse to grow bitter and turn away from god never let the if you're not going to hold up your end of the bargain mindset creep in god's ways are not our ways his ways are beyond understanding we often say that most of the times we plan and then god decides so while you wait do not try not to be bitter i know it might be very difficult but don't be now angry to say that yeah you know what I hate this, I hate medicine, I hate medical students, I hate hospitals, and then you become this bitter person. While you wait, wait with a cheerful heart, it can be very difficult. I'm sure it is difficult because I've been there, but you know what, whatever that you do in that moment, make sure that you give it your all. When I was doing BSc, it was not something that I was enjoying, but I was still doing it. I was doing it to the best of my ability I made sure that my results were always on par because I knew that what I was planning for I knew what was ahead of me was great and I was like if God can trust me with a BSc degree now and I can do my best in it then definitely you will see that I will be able to cope with MBCHP and for me being somebody who grew up in a village I now realize that Probably getting into medical school straight after matric would have been difficult for me. I may have not have coped with the volume of the work. Then I had to get BSc so that I can practice how to use a computer. I can practice how to be using Blackboard, how to use online services and all of that. And that made me a better student. That's why I will never say to anybody, study this specific degree. Study something that's going to make you happy study something that's going to make you cheerful while you wait on god to answer this dream to fulfill his promise that he made for you because i don't believe he would put a dream of this magnitude inside of you only for him to turn a blind eye and say that mm, i don't think you're the right person for this so while you wait wait with a cheerful heart try not to be bitter the third point third and last i don't want this video to be too long it says that when your dreams go unfulfilled remember hope this is quite important the hope is circumstantial in this world we hope for what we can see and touch heavenly hope is personal heavenly hope is fixed on jesus working with us even when all worldly hope seems lost fix your hope on the promise that jesus will never leave your side and you can't lose hope it's very important it's very important to remain hopeful it's very important to be really, to know that you know what no matter what happens this i will become a doctor i've seen people going to russia i've seen people going to china 
I've seen my friends go to Cuba. They are bad now. They are doctors. It's amazing. I've seen people apply for so many years and then they get in. I've seen other people along the line realizing that you know what? God doesn't plant you in only one place, but he can plant you in other places. A friend of mine wanted to do medicine also. We did BSc, but she's now a videographer and she's happy. She feels like she is fulfilling that dream there. And it's not that she is, she's still working with patients. I have a friend who's an occupational therapist. She's, she get to interact with patients because we go into medicine saying that we want to help people. So it's very important for us to realize that you can help people in many other ways. You can be a speech therapist, you can be a dietitian, you can be a nurse, you can study Bachelor of Clinical Medical Practice. So there's so many things that you can do. Uh, but if you are set and you know that an MBCHB is what you want, is what God wants for you, pray about it. Uh, keep on applying yourself, work hard. Make sure that you show up and you show off in every aspect of your life. If you get trusted with a BA degree, become the best teacher in those years. If God said to you, I'm going to put you in accounting for a while, become the best accountant. If you're in BSc, make sure that you provide your utmost best. Life won't always be easy. Things are going to be difficult. We go through life. We are human beings. We have emotions. We're not always happy, but we remain hopeful. We remain, we may we hope for a better tomorrow. We remain fixed on God. And you know what? We know that when we walk with God, we we find we we in good hands, and your dreams are valid. If you did enjoy this video? Give it a massive thumbs up. Do share it this video. Just if you have any video suggestions of what you would like to see, do drop in your suggestions. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. You can leave them on all my social media profiles: Instagram, Twitter. I'm at the Mad Guy T. I've also joined TikTok now. <laughs> you know what? I refuse to age. I'm always going to be this fountain of youth. So up until the next video, take care of yourself and do take care of your dreams as well. Bye.